see if it's starting to. You can see it's starting to split into thin, thin layers, just almost paper thin. You can just get your fingers right underneath there and split the layers. It just pounces into nice, thin, thin, and it becomes very soft. You feel this and then feel that, and you'll feel a great difference in it. So go ahead and. And uh, before we finish, I w I, I, are there any questions that you might have? Um, what do you and in your materials? Do you just have them on your property? Or? All kinds of places. Yeah, okay. Um, you know, we we actually, perfect. we can yeah. actually get um, permits from the, okay. uh, to, to gather. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. But I have friends that get it from their, my cattails come from friends who have ponds. Um, I've been known to just pull over and jump out. I see somebody <laughs> cutting something in their yard, and I'm going, what are you going to do with that? <laughs> like, I don't know. I'm, Can I have it? And I throw it in the trunk and go home. Um, Juncus is like everywhere. It, it grows in every ditch and, and, and field around, so it's usually not too hard to find. Uh, we have seven acres, and periodically we have a cherry that blows down, I collect it, you know, the maple that blows down, I get the bark from it. So um, just about anywhere that I can find it, there's uh, gathering trips that we do. As, as the, it would, the tribe we were down at Bob Straub Park not long ago, well, earlier this spring, collecting uh, spruce root. Um, those are my favorite, the, to take the kids out and let them gather it, and especially bark <coughs> gathering, because they're not like alongside the road. <laughs> I have to, you climb out into the woods and going out there really isn't so bad. But I'm getting to the age now where carrying it back up that hill can be quite a struggle for me. So it's nice to have some young, strong bodies to, to carry your goods for you because I'm not so good at that anymore. This one is all twined with root. And it took me three days working six hours a day just to split the root before I even started to make the basket. So this one is a real time consuming one. A lot of it is the material that you're using. Now this is actually made from raffia from the craft store. Had to drive to Salem to get it. <laughs> that was my preparation time. Generally when I start to teach a class, if I have prepared their material for them, like today, I have material ready for you guys. I will tell you, two-thirds of the work has been done the second you start your basket. <laughs> You're going to do the last third of the work. To be able to bring something in my house that I found outside and make something wonderful and useful, because I went around the house this morning and <laughs> dumping things out of these so I can bring them. Almost everything here has a use in my house. Um, and I use every day. This is my, my colander I've had for 10 years. I use it every day to wash fruit, to wash vegetables. It hangs on my pot rack in the kitchen. So um, that is cool to me, to know that that came from willow that I picked on my grandmother's place. Um, you know, I'm out there in January in the dead of winter, picking it and bringing it home, and I make something that I can use every day. Um, it's, it's totally rewarding. And to think about my ancestors who did it out of necessity and how truly ingenious they were. I mean, they looked around. They, they had a need, and they looked around at what was available to them, and they managed to make everything for their life that basically we need for our life today. I, 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 you know, I might use different, I might use Pyrex, I might use Tupperware, but it's used for the same thing, to store food, to eat food. I have the same needs in a, in a real basic way that they did. And it's a treat for me to be able to uh, use what they did and, and bring it into my life. You can see a lot of these things, my hat, not a traditional shape, but I don't wear it just to the powwow. I wear it to the art fair, I wear it gardening. So it's a little more contemporary style and it fits into my life now. There were actually 
not everyone made baskets. There were basket makers. And, and I'll tell you right now, there, there's, a, in my tiny little world, a huge distinction between a basket weaver and a basket maker. I consider myself a basket maker. And that was because you literally start from the ground up. You would collect, prepare, and do your materials all on your own. Um, but there were specific basket makers within a tribe, and they traded just like someone else might do another craft. Or, and, and, and so they would, that was their job, basically. And I think probably, yeah, they did learn from, like I teach our kids, under your wing. <laughs> and when Tony talked about doing our kids and the way we teach with them, we are really fortunate at the tribe. Um, because I have taught public schools, Cub Scout groups, church lady groups, I mean, all, all sorts of kids. And uh, we have the distinct advantage that we are family. Lots of them call me auntie. I may be their cousin, but they call me auntie. And I do have the advantage when I teach basketry to them to literally bring them in to me. They sit on my lap and my arms go around them and our hands work together. And I'm whispering quietly into their ear about what we're doing and why we're doing it and what it's made out of. And it's amazing that a five-year-old can have so much focus. But in that intimate setting, they really do zero in on what it is they're doing. If I were a teacher going to have some material for the kids to work with, I would start with cattail because they're going to see that. Uh, you know, when they drive home, I call it the corn dog plant because they all know what that is. <laughs> <laughs> and so, and it's actually one that you could still, well, it's getting a little bit yellow now, but if you could find some nice green ones in a wet spot, you could cut them and dry them and use them this year. So it, it's, a, it's a really good natural material that's easy to collect and they'll see it. They'll, they'll understand what it is when you talk about it. And it's um, really versatile. I mean, you can make just about anything. This is a, a basket of fans, shoes, hats, mats, just about anything that you could envision in weaving to do that. So um, that's where I'd start if I was going to gather things for students, cocktails. You could probably even dry them inside still. I mean, it'd take a while longer, but yeah, that's what I'd do. Well, thank you, Brian. One very brief thing is that, you know, all this material that we did develop for Grand Round was developed with the intention to share with both other tribes and with public schools. So, you know, accessing the cultural resources department in Grand Round is relatively easy. Yeah. And I think, you know, folks there will be very uh, gracious yeah. in terms of wanting to share. So I have I been to, you, you know, you to do that. probably 15 or 20, I believe it's fourth grade, maybe fifth grade classes here in Oregon from Hillsboro to Coos Bay to talk to the kids about basketry during their, they, they do a thing on culture, right? During, yeah. And so schools of Colin invited me. I was just down in Corvallis a week ago. Um, so, you know, if you want someone to come, happy to call the tribe and they can get in contact with me but um, I especially like to talk to kids uh, and when they do it usually seems to be the time when they're making their dioramas <laughs> and I always bring up uh, lots of extra stuff uh, and they go can I have some of that can I have some of that so usually I, give, I, I leave a bundle of willow sticks or something for them to have for their diorama making but yeah I've, I've been to loads and loads of schools to talk to the little kids so and I promise I won't touch you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so please come up before you have to go into the other group and touch and feel and, okay, so there's and a group B look. And that